In today's episode, we are going to talk about Figma Dev Mode, a game changer feature that's redefining the way we collaborate and bridge the gap between design and development. We'll explore what Dev Mode is, how it works, and why it's an essential tool for both designers and developers. What's Dev Mode? Well, Dev Mode is a dedicated space for developers, allowing them to implement the design much faster and more efficiently. In the past, the developer team could head over to the inspect panel that was placed right next to the prototype panel, but it's no longer available because now they have an entire dedicated space to inspect the design. So now let's switch over to Dev Mode and see what it's capable of. To turn on dev mode, you can easily toggle this switch on. And as you can see, some elements turned green, which indicates that we are now in the dev mode. Let's see what we have here. On the left side, we have all our pages. And here, as you can see, we have this ready for development section, which is empty at the moment. And then we have all our layers. On the right side, we have these two panels. We have the inspect panel and the plugins panel. If you haven't selected any element or if you just left click somewhere here, you will see these code settings appear. You can specify the language and the measurement unit. So if the developer is developing this project for web, he or she can specify CSS here and also specify the measurement unit here. By default, it's set to pixel. It can be set to rem as well. I'm gonna leave it as is later, we will change it. Now I'm gonna select this frame, and as soon as I do that, you'll see all these sections appear, right? Here we have the dev resources section, where you can connect different resources to your project. For example, if your team is using GitHub for version control, you can simply paste the GitHub link here and it will be connected to this project, which is so helpful. Then right underneath, we have this box model, enabling the developer to check all the padding, the border and the margin. And here again, you can adjust the language, whether it's for web or for iOS or Android. Then here we have the layout code and the style, allowing the developer to convert your design to code much faster, which is so cool. Then right underneath, we have all the color styles and all the variables, let's say, that have been used in this project. Next, we have the assets section where the developer can easily export all the assets he or she needs. And here we have the export section in case the developer wants to export this whole page. Depending on the element you select, these properties on the right side might change. For example, Right now, I'm selecting this homepage frame and you see all these properties. But if I go ahead and select, for example, this text, you'll see this box model changes. And here we have the font size, we have the line height, and here we have the typography section with this code. We have all our typography properties. But what if you select a component? Here I have this bell component. If I select it, on the right side, you'll see that we have this additional section, okay? We have this opening playground button, and if I hit that, this component playground opens and here is where the developer can experiment with different properties of our component without affecting our design, which is so cool. So if your component has multiple different properties and the developer wants to learn more about those properties, he or she can easily experiment with all those properties right here. So here this component has only one property, show dot, and we can just toggle it off or on, just like that, which is so handy in my opinion. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our today's sponsor, Conjointly's Market Test. If you haven't heard of Market Test, it's time to check it out to get real human feedback on your designs from 100 US consumers in under two hours. It lets you perfect your UI designs, graphic designs, and more. Market Test evaluates your designs with various metrics using top two box scores, showing what percent of respondents gave it four or five out of five. For example, this report shows over 70% of users found the old Twitter logo very likable, original, and polished, seriously outperforming the new logo. Launching a market test takes only minutes and can even be launched directly from Figma with their new Figma integration. Check out the links in the description to try out market test today. All right, now let's talk about measurements. When it comes to measurements, you can easily select an element. In this case, I'm gonna select this card one and inside you'll see all these padding and margins. 
Here we have a 24 pixel top and bottom padding, a 16 pixel left and right padding, and here we have a 12 pixel margin. Now let's change the measurement unit from pixel to RAM. Of course, it doesn't make sense for an iOS application, but I'm just gonna show you how it works. Now, if I select this element, as you can see, we have RAM values. So here, instead of 16, we have one RAM, which is our base value, 16 pixels. And here we have 1.5. And the developer doesn't need to manually convert all your pixel values to RAM values, which is quite good. Next, I'm going to talk about this ready for development section, which is empty. Well, as a designer, we usually work on multiple screens, not only one screen, right? And once a page is ready for development, we can easily select it here. And right here in the toolbar, we'll have this new option, which is called mark as ready for dev. And if I click on it, it will be marked for the developer indicating that this page is ready for implementation. And now if we switch over to dev mode, on the left side, you'll see that here under this ready for development section, we have this home page. So the developer can easily understand which pages are ready for development. Now I'm going to show you another cool feature of dev mode, which is my favorite. Here when I select this home page on the right side, I'll get this information created 20 hours ago. But now let's imagine I change something here, okay? Let's select this card and let me just change its color. I'm gonna change it to something else. And then I'm gonna select these elements, okay? These text layers and just change their color. And here as well, let me just change its color to maybe white, okay? Just like that. Now, if I switch over to dev mode and I select this frame, you'll see that this compare changes button has been added to this section. And if I click on it, this window pops up showing us the history of changes made to this page. Here, as you can see, I'll have this card one. It says it has been edited. And once I click on it, it zooms in to the section that has been edited. And here it shows me the previous properties and the current properties. Also, this element has been changed. We changed its color, this one as well, this one as well, and this one. But sometimes the change might not be that obvious. In that case, you can use another feature, which is so cool, and that is overlay. Here we have these two options, side-by-side -side comparison and the overlay comparison. If I click on this overlay, here you can use this slider just like this to see the previous and the current version. It's pretty cool, isn't it? The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the plugins tab. If I just head over to plugins, you'll see that there are some dedicated dev mode plugins to make the development process much easier. For example, you can use this plugin, Figma to Code. If I just run it, here you will have these four options, HTML, Tailwind, Flutter, Swift UI. So if it was a web page, you could just select HTML, here you'll see the responsive preview, small, medium, and large. And here you can find the HTML code ready for you. Let me just expand this panel, just like that. But since it's an iOS mobile application, I'm gonna change it to Swift UI. Here I can specify whether I need the code snippet, the striked code, or the preview code just like this. If you wanna learn how to make your design responsive using Figma variables, make sure to check out this video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have a great day and see you next time.